Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Mark's. Our opening hymn is number 556 in the Breaking Bread. If you all could please rise as we begin our Mass. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. As we enter into our sacred mysteries, as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection, we acknowledge our sins, and we ask for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. 
But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, are your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert, were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in the God's way, in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered and, and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are not looking for me because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, the Father, God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, we have the Bread of Life discourse, Jesus teaching all who are listening about what this true gift of the Bread of Life is. I am the Bread of Life. Whoever believes in me will never hunger or thirst. There is a, a, a legend in my family, kind of a family story. So my father, uh, when he was probably the late 60s, early 70s, he was in a band. And um, I think he played the keyboard, and he was in a band with my, my, dad's, my uncle, my dad's brother, and, and different people. But he had, like, the long, you know, hair, like, in the, in the 60s and 70s. And so when my dad's brother, Tim, when he got married, my dad obviously was going to be in the wedding, well, showed up to the wedding, and he didn't cut his hair. And my grandmother was so upset because she told my dad to cut his hair before that wedding. And my grandma was so angry that my dad showed up to his brother's wedding without cutting that hair that my grandma did not go to communion during the Mass. And I've heard about this all the years later, that that was like a huge deal that my father showed up to that wedding not cutting his hair. But so much so that my grandma knew her anger and made that decision during that Mass. She said, I'm too angry to go to communion. I think that's a good food for thought for all of us. <laughs> not food for thought because it's the Eucharist we're talking about, but food for thought, um, of how do we go and approach receiving the Eucharist? Again, we shouldn't have anger on our hearts if we are going to be receiving the Lord. That's, it's a sacrament where heaven touches earth and we are entering in and receiving our Lord. And my grandma had that wherewithal to say, you know, I don't really feel like I'm in the state that I should be receiving the Eucharist. Now, in our church, now back in the day, there was a, a bigger fasting than we have now. But even now, we should be fasting an hour, preparing our bodies to receive our Lord. And it's a mindful thing, too, saying something very special is going to be happening. Many people, if they have a grave sin on their souls, say, I, I need to go receive the sacrament of penance, receive reconciliation before I receive the Eucharist. Again, it may have been more common back in the day, but what's changed? What, do we prepare our souls to receive the Lord who we're going to receive? There's a preparation that must take place. It isn't just coming in here and having all the sorts of things on our mind and just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, no, we receive the Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity. He chooses to come to us. In what state of mind are we in? When we receive him, go out in the world and bring the message of his gospel. Hopefully we're in a state of grace, we're in a state of peace, and we have that wherewithal to understand the importance and the gravity of this moment where heaven touches earth, where we bring the Lord out after this Mass as we are sent to proclaim his word, to proclaim his love.
And we stand together as one family in faith and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In trust and confidence, we bring our prayers and petitions to our loving Father. That Christ may continue to draw all people to his church to receive the bread of life in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord That the word of God may guide elected officials to protect all human life, especially the most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord That all who are burdened by worry may be renewed by Christ in trusting the providence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That the Holy Spirit may continually guide each of us in living as our new selves in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for all who have died, especially for Pat and Connie Trongo, for whom this Mass is offered. That their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace for eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And we pray for the prayers on our prayer line and for those that we voice in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We ask all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 446. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Mark, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us turn to one another and offer the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 342.
Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts. And in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's always so nice to have the choir with us. And welcome back to you two who haven't been with us for a while. So thank you for, for joining us again. I was worried about you, but Amanda assured me you'd be back. So thank you for, for coming back. Um, yeah, that was awkward. But anyway, welcome back. Uh, Secondly, um, I think we have to sit down again because we have a, sorry, please sit. Um, we have a special gathering uh, this evening after the Mass uh, from our parish-wide survey. It came forward that there is a big interest in women's ministry. So instead of me talking about women's ministry, we're going to have a, you know, Samantha come up and talk about, a little bit about what's going on and the listening session that's going to happen downstairs after Mass. So Samantha, thank you. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm not great at public speaking, so I, I type something up and I'm going to read it verbatim. Okay. Uh, my name is Samantha, and I've been working alongside Diane, Lisa, and Amanda to start the women's ministry here at St. Mark's. This ministry is for all women who wish to grow deeper in their relationship with our Lord, as well as build friendships in a supportive environment for each other. We have a lot of ideas that we think are pretty good. But we'd really like to know what your thoughts are. If you're able to, please join us downstairs in the parish hall for a brief presentation on uh, what we've been planning and what our goals are for the women's ministry. We also have some questions, uh, handouts, polls, some materials to show you, um, and because we'd like to know your thoughts on those things, because really we'd want this ministry to be for you. So knowing what you'd like to do is helpful. <laughs> um, so come down and, and listen, or talk. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so they're having one listening session presentation tonight after the 5 p.m. Mass, and then next weekend after the 9.30 Mass, they're having another one for the Sunday crew. Uh, so please, if you're interested in women's ministry and want to hear and, and also give your thoughts, please join them downstairs um, after Mass. Thank you. Um, other than that, uh, you'll see on the side of the church by the side entrance, the, the landscaping project is near completion. Um, like I told you, the, um, there was a, uh, a family that donated a statue of the Holy Family. 
Uh, the husband went through RCIA and was baptized last year, and it was kind of in Thanksgiving for his conversion. Uh, that's being installed this coming week, but the rest of the landscaping all had to get done. I think it looks great. Um, it just needs to be watered uh, so everything stays alive in the 95 uh, degree heat. So, uh, but anyway, if you want to take a look at that on your way out, and uh, thank you to the donor uh, who made this, this statue happen, and again to the parish, uh, just through aver the, just the operatory uh, making that project happen, uh, thank you so much uh, for be beautifying our property. And we stand together. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 213.